the first person who came out of the trees and took a stick and with himself as the center drew a circle around himself must have thought he had some pretty strong magic you know i'm interested in that uh, area between magic and logic you know <laughs> which i think art falls into I think that Edna is an artist who was very deep in her thinking about the work and very deeply committed to it. And what springs out of that commitment is the, an endless possibility of resignification. Her um, interest in design, in, in mathematics, you know, all of that gives a different uh, breath, I think, to, to the work and make it very fresh from the perspective of today. One of the things I think is so compelling about Edna's work is her real focus on non-narrative experiential engagement with the viewer. They're not just abstraction to look at or look into, but there's something that she really wanted the viewer to experience in the most sort of sensual, intimate way. What struck me most was how progressive and contemporary and how she developed and moved along with the times and really stayed very present um, in the moment. I think it's reflected in her work as it continued to change and grow throughout her career. It was clear to me that artists treasure her. Philadelphia was certainly the place where she was able to flourish as an artist, but also to train generations of designers and younger artists. As somebody who had deep, um, very productive friendships with other very important artists and architects and scientists, she was part of a group of people really thinking about the relationship between form and mathematics. starting to work as a teacher at the Philadelphia College of Art in the late 50s was a big influence on the direction my work took. I became interested in the problems that I was giving my students, problems in visual perception. How can you make a circle in the field look like it's light and flowed up? Uh, how can you make two colors vibrate against each other? All those sort of elementary problems became things that I, I got into myself. And it was at that time that, that I decided that I didn't have to do something, painting something out there, that, I, that the painting could be generated just on its own terms. I mean, it could, you could sort of set up a game plan for a painting and it could happen. It could grow like natural things grow. Edna studied at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts and she studied at the MFA program at the University of Pennsylvania. She received traveling scholarships to travel to Europe and this was just post-war. So she was influenced by the German modernists and was very interested by the Bauhaus school. Particularly what stuck with her was this idea of sort of unified composition. And so that's where she began to move towards a more abstract mode and really developed her interest in geometry. She kind of naturally evolved towards an op art experience, studying the color theory of Albers, leading her to an interest in the structures of perception and how subtle juxtapositions or changes in color could really alter how you see things. The way in which the works affect the viewer change through time. As a viewer, you feel that your own ground has become unstable in terms of what you're seeing, and this is uncertainty about what ultimately is uh, in front of you. Uh, I think that the painting uh, you know, it's immediately attractive, you know, just because of that uncertainty that translates as movement, even, you know, the movement of your own thoughts and the way in which they throw you off balance. But at the same time, that attraction, it makes you, I would say, agitated to some degree. 
she was naturally evolving through the own development in her work. And she was looking at geometry more broadly, still with the idea of unified composition and careful placement of forms, but really pulling apart each geometric form almost like figures on a stage or in an environment or setting. It's interesting because her work was evolving sort of parallel to major movements. So she went sort of from op and minimalism, um, both of which you can uh, relate her work to, but she wasn't consciously part of them and was always a step outside of the manifesto, if you will. All kinds of geometric patterns on pots and people have been doing optical art. It's not a new thing. You know, it goes way back in our past. But I didn't know that that was underway. I am sure that for her as an artist, that gave her a certain sense of freedom. Because she was not so intimately part of the system, she could exercise it more. I don't think in the work there is a call for um, reflection in a sort of dualistic or rational way, I think it's a call for feeling. You see that in the work and it comes through as a sort of a joy, as a joyful experience. It's what the, you as a viewer feel in front of a body of work like hers.